This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. You got to learn how to be happy. Sometimes you got to get up and say, Lord, show me how to live today. Show me how. Some of y'all get up with the same worry that you went to sleep on, and you wake up and you continue in it, and you, you got to let it go. There's too much living to do to be worried about something that's so insignificant to where your life is concerned. You need Jesus so you can inhale and exhale, amen. But some stuff, you just need to be, you know what? It'll be all right. There is a purpose for your life. Introducing Grace Life Academy, an innovative approach to learning God's Word. Grace Life Academy offers unlimited access with hundreds of hours of online teachings. You'll have access to comprehensive video Bible lessons that include features such as e-courses, study guides, an online community, quizzes, and more. Text GLA to 51555 or go online to MyGraceLifeAcademy.com. If you have your Bibles this morning, go with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 6. <clears throat> Matthew, chapter 6, and verse 25. Let's look at it in the New uh, Living Translation. Matthew, chapter 6, and verse 25. And let's talk about how to become uh, free from worry, how to defeat worry. Uh, everybody in here will always have a temptation to worry about something. Um, sometimes that happens right before you go to bed, and something will come to your attention and try to rob you out of your rest and rob you out of your sleep. So we all will have a potential to worry all the time. Uh, I'm not trying to say to you that that potential is going to no longer be a part of your life, but how you confront that potential, how you confront uh, the temptation to worry and to carry it and to allow it to become a burden in your life is, is entirely different for the Christian who knows his God. Amen? Amen. So Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 says, uh, and I'll read out the NLT if you can put that on screen so we can all see it. He said, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Man, isn't that the truth? not to worry about everyday life. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, I mean, we're, 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 we're too blessed to be stressed. Seriously, it's like some of the stuff that we're stressing over, if you would go to other countries, they don't have nowhere near that opportunity to have the things you have. He says, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body and more than clothes? Look at what we've reduced life to. And, and it's more than that. It's more than food. It's more than, than clothing. It's, it's, it's more than drink. We've got to make sure we, we kind of redefine life. We can get caught up in, in all of these things that people call life. But I like to define life as, you know, I, I believe life is a sum total of who you spend it with. That's why what happens when somebody dies in your life, it seems like a piece of you left. It, it, that's kind of the truth. It's a sum total of who you spend it with. Life is so much more than the, the stuff and the things. And if you can get them, praise God for them. But you can't allow those, those outside things to, you know, define life for you. It, it's relationship. It's your relationship vertically with God and then your relationship horizontally with the people that you spend time with. My life is a sum total of, of, of who, who I spend time with. And that's so, so very important. And somebody says, well, now I know where the worrying come from. I'm spending too much time with Frank. 
<laughs> well, baby, who was Frank? My husband. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. <laughs> but life is more than those things. And look at verse 26. <clears throat> Matthew 6, 26, we're going to read all the way down to <clears throat> until I say stop. <laughs> he says, now, he says, I want to show you something. Look at the birds. He says, I want to teach you a lesson, and I want to use the birds. Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. Wow, they're dependent on the heavenly Father. And aren't you far more valuable to him than the birds? Amen? Amen. Look at verse 27. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? 28. And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Now, you know, yesterday we were, we were in, in New York getting ready for service, and it was like, it felt like 113 degrees. And I wasn't trying to wear nothing I had in the closet. So I went to Target and got me a short sleeve shirt. I'm not worrying about what somebody think about that short sleeve shirt. <laughs> Why? I found me a pair, what, what, what kind of uh, material that was? It was linen, linen breeze. The shirt was a short sleeve shirt. I mean, we hooked stuff together. And I know some people who just, well, I just ain't going to church then. <laughs> really? Is it that big of a deal? That's one of the reasons why we're trying to dress differently, so to be okay that you come to church any way you can come to church. Y'all know that was the time I would not come to church without my three-piece suit on. But now there are some times I'll, I'll walk right out the house with whatever I got on and preach. Yes, sir. Has that become a big concern? And now it's no longer clothing. Now you're concerned about your eyelashes. Now you're concerned about <laughs> your weave, your unit. Now you're, con you're concerned about, you got so much to be concerned about. Do these shoes go with that one? How this make me look? Do I need more, newer spanks because these don't seem like it's squeezing me in like it used to? It, it, it's just so much. And, and how do we allow God to get caught up into all of that? Now, ladies, don't you get mad. I'm feeling, I'm feeling something coming from the congregation. <laughs> He says, those lilies don't work or make their clothing. Look at the next verse, 30, 29. Yet Solomon in all of his glory was not dressed as beautiful as they are. God took care of them. Look at this. And if God cares so wondrously, uh, wonder, wonder, wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith. Now, this is not talking about the size of your faith, but why is it that your faith in God doesn't last long? Why is it so small? You know how you have a burst of energy? Why was it a burst of energy instead of, you know, lasting a while? Why is it that your faith is so short? For the most part, why is it that we can come to church and have faith, and as soon as we leave and something happens, it's gone? Why is it so little? Right. 31. So don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? Sometimes you just got to pull it, you got to just kind of pull it in like, dude, why am I complaining? I am too blessed to be complaining and worrying about this. It's going to be all right. Because you can allow the circumstances around you to just kind of impact your life and how you're thinking. You got to learn how to be happy. Sometimes you got to get up and say, Lord, show me how to live today. Show me how. Some of y'all get up with the same worry that you went to sleep on, and you wake up and you continue in it, and you, you got to let it go. There's too much living to do to be worried about something that's so insignificant to where your life is concerned. You need Jesus so you can inhale and exhale. Amen. But some stuff, you just need to be, you know what? It'll be all right. It'll be all right. All right, this is the driest chicken I've ever seen. But you know what? 
you know, man, I got $20. I can go and get me some chicken. It's not that big of a deal. You understand what I'm saying? Watch this. So don't worry about these things, saying what we shall eat or what, we sh what should we drink or eat or wear. 32, I love this. These things dominate, here it is, it dominates the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all of your needs. Unbelievers are dominated with these things. I, I, my prayer is that it not becomes a part of your life as a believer. He says, your Father already knows all your needs. Thank you. 33. So, what do I do first? Let's seek the kingdom of God above else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll say it like this. Know that Jesus has already made you righteous and pursue Jesus. Pursue Jesus. Now, it's important that as Christian people that we know the difference between real belief and when we're just saying something out of our, our mouth and it hadn't happened yet. How do you authenticate when you really believe God? I mean, when you really believe in God. Let me show you something here. Uh, go to Hebrews chapter 4 and, and verse 3. Now, worry is fear-based. Worry is based in fear. There's something I'm, I'm afraid of. I'm anxious about something, not too sure about something. It's fear-based. What's the motivation behind your worry? What are you afraid of? What's the motivation of, behind your worry? What is it that you're doubting? What is the motivation behind your worry? All right, now, this is so important. Look at the first line here, Hebrews 4, 3. Let's read it out loud together. Ready, read. For we which have believed... Stop right there. We who believe enter into the rest. So, you in rest is going to authenticate your belief. Because if you say you believe, then you ought to be at rest. Remember how we define rest. Rest is not defined as inactivity. Rest not from work, but rest in work. In other words, you do what you do, but you're not stressing while you're doing it. Now, y'all know I got to explain that because, you know, some of us, when I mention the word rest, and you ain't got no job, and I'm like, why are you at home? Well, Pastor Dahl said we should rest. No, I didn't, I, I don't mean rest from work, I mean rest in work. In other words, when you do what you're doing, but you're not worried or stressed out while you're doing what you do, you are resting in work. It's not resting in inactivity. It's resting with a peace and a confidence that you know that you know that all is well. When you are at rest, your rest it authenticates your belief. I believe, therefore I'm at rest. You can tell somebody who really believes they're at rest. They're at rest. The doctor told them, well, you have some incurable disease, and you get in the Word, and you find out the finished works of Jesus, and you, you believe you're already the healed. Well, praise God, you're at rest, and you're not working to try to get something that's already been given to you. You're working. You're working for one reason only, ladies and gentlemen. You are working to stay at rest. Because when you stay at rest, that's when you're going to see God's best. And if you want God to work for you, you're going to have to stay at rest because while you're resting, he's working. But if you start working instead of resting, then he's going to rest and let you work. How many of you know you need God working for you? Amen? Amen. You know, this whole deal around work, let me show you something in John 6, verse 28 and 29 in the New Living Translation. John 6, verse 28 and 29 you know, we're, we're always somehow thinking, I need to work in, in, in order to get God to do something. I need to work in order to get healed. I need to work in order to be delivered. And, uh, and I agree with you, but now we need to find out what the work is. What, what does it mean when he says work? 
Uh, let's, let's read it in the King James and then the New Living Translation because we still have this attitude, I just can't believe I can receive something uh, the way you're talking about. You're talking about just believing God. I mean, I got to do something, and that's, that's your biggest problem. And that's where a lot of your worrying comes in that because you're, you're having to trust what you do to make this happen. And then you got to ask the question, am I doing enough to make this happen? And then you're performing to try to make some stuff happen. And look what he says here. Then said they unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? They were seeing a lot of powerful things happening, and they wanted to know what do we need to do so we can see God working like this in our lives. And look what he said in verse 29. He said, John 6, 29, here's, here's the work I want you to do. He said, Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God. Pay attention to this, ladies and gentlemen. This is the work of God. What is the work of God? that you believe on him who he has sent. So when we talk about work from a New Testament perspective, he says this is the work of God. This is, this is the work of God. It's not you working to try to get healed. It's not you working, eat, watch this, it's not you working to try to get peace. It, it, it's, it's believing on the one that he sent. Look at this in the, in the New Living Translation now. In verse 28, he says, um, they replied, we want to perform God's works too. What should we do? Listen to this in verse 29. He said, Jesus told them, this is the only work God wants from you. Believe in the one he has sent. This is the only work that God wants from you. Boy, that's powerful. This is the only work that God wants for you. So while you're going around trying to figure out how all of this stuff you're doing is going to translate into rewards from God, don't forget what he said. The only work I want you doing is believing in the one that I sent to you. Amen. Man, that's powerful. So I sit back and I say, you know what, God? I believe in Jesus Christ. I see my healing through Jesus Christ. And, and you know, some people think, well, that ain't nothing. See, if to authenticate that belief is going to be is going to be now also showing you the work to stay in rest. If I say I believe, and he said, this is the work I want you to do, I want you to believe. This is the work I want you to do. I want you to believe. This is the work I want you to do. I want you to believe. Well, it's not belief if you hadn't found yourself in a place of rest. That is the authentication of your belief, rest. And he says in Hebrews 4, labor to enter into the rest. Labor not, not to get rich. Labor not to get healed. Labor to enter into the rest. Because if you are in the rest, then what's finished is going to show up in your life. Are, are, you, are you understanding what I'm saying? If you're in the rest, then what is finished is going to show up in your life. Look at this, Hebrews 4, 3. Let's read down a little bit, and then I'll, I'll get going here tonight, today. Labor to enter into the rest. No, don't labor to try to get something from God that he's already given you. Labor to rest and showing the authentic belief that you have. You know, the number one fear that Satan wants to put on Christian people who are believing like this, he wants you to be afraid that what he promised you won't come to pass. So when you read the Scripture and you see it's the finished works of Jesus, then the enemy's coming to your mind and say, what if that's not true? What if that doesn't come to pass? That's the number one fear of the devil. The number one fear of the devil towards Christian people is to be afraid that what God promised won't happen. So worry is fear-based. Worry is fear-based. It comes as a result of you saying, well, you know, I want to believe, but I really don't believe. And you can tell it because you're not at rest. You can tell it because you hadn't entered into that rest. You can tell it because you're worried, you're still stressed out, you're still trying to work to try to make this thing happen, and we've not learned how to enter into that rest. There still remaineth a rest, and we're not entering into that rest. And, and when, you, when you had it into the rest, you're, you're demonstrating. That is the proof. That's proof that you don't believe. Look at this, verse 4, Hebrews 4 and 4. 
Let's read on down. He says, For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Now, this is an illustration of, 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 of the Sabbath. Jesus is now the Sabbath in the New Testament, and we rest in Jesus. Amen? Amen. But he's trying to show you that on the seventh day, God ceased from his works. He ceased from his labor. Now, watch this, verse 5. He says, and in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, verse 6, uh, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in. Now, notice, notice how you don't enter into the rest. They entered not in because of what? Unbelief. They didn't enter in because of unbelief. Unbelief. I, I, that's fear-based. You, 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 you're not resting because you don't believe. That's what he's saying. You've not entered into the confidence and the peace of knowing that it's already done and it's already finished because you just don't believe it. And when you just don't believe it, you're in fear. That's the fear. That's the fear that Satan wants to put on every believer. And when you tolerate fear, you contaminate your faith. And you cannot contaminate your faith walking around in fear. Do you know fear at the moment you're fearing is not even real? You are afraid of something that's not even real. It's something that showed up in your head. It ain't even real. And then you go panicking. You know what panic is? It's groundless fear. There's no ground to be afraid. You're afraid of something that has not even manifested. You're afraid of something that is not having, has, hasn't even been done yet. Because the enemy doesn't want you to believe what's already done. He don't want you to believe what's already been manifested, praise God. He wants you to get in unbelief and walk in the fear of something that ain't even real. Think about it for a moment. You are afraid that you might lose your job. You got a job right now. Losing your job ain't even real right now. It's just the thought that has come that said to you, oh, you're going to lose your job. Yeah, but God said this. No, no, don't believe what God said. Look at how they were acting. Nobody didn't speak to you today, and you are now yielding power to bring to pass something that ain't even real, but fear is the faith of the devil, and if you tolerate fear, you'll contaminate faith and yield power and resources to bring to pass something that didn't even exist until you start fearing it. And that's what worry is. Worry. Worry is negative meditation on the wrong thing. Negative meditation on the wrong thing. Spending so much time and so much resource meditating on the wrong thing. Oh, but what if, what if something happened to my kids? Oh, but what if I lose that? Or, oh, but what if I don't get that? Or, oh, what if Frank doing something to me? Or, oh, where is Susan? And, and who kissing on Susie's cheek? And, oh, Lord, have mercy. Look at what they said about, about gold. It's going down, and I bought all this gold. What am I going to do with it? And you, you're in fear. You're, you're in fear. Your faith is, is, is being contaminated. You're afraid. You start looking at society, and what if they don't accept me? And what if they don't like me? You're afraid. You're, you're, you're walking in the fear and the bondage of people. The worst bondage in the world is people bondage. And you're so in people bondage, you can't, you don't even know how to be free. You don't even know how to be free. You, you, you up here trying to imitate some model on a picture that they photoshopped. And you don't even know there are men in the world who like their women. Uh, how I say that? How I say, thick. Thank you, Ann. Like they're women thick. <laughs> they don't want to hug. Some men don't like slapping themselves all the time when they hug their woman. <laughs> and you walking around in insecurity and in worry, like you can't be accepted because you think the whole world accepts the Photoshop. And so you carry that kind of attitude and your low self-esteem is drawing the wrong kind of person because you won't raise your self-esteem up and be satisfied and confident in who you are. Did you know worry is a wrong form of meditation? We all go through things in our life that bring about uncertainty and doubt. Some of y'all get up with the same worry that you went to sleep on. And you wake up and you continue in it and you, you gotta let it go. 
I often think about moments where challenges have been at the forefront and I've been tackling these challenges and they've now become priority. But then this message somehow just brought me back into trust. Dude, why am I complaining? I am too blessed to be complaining and worried about this. It's gonna be all right. For a love gift of $20 or more, we would like to offer you The Contrast, Self-Effort versus Rest, four message series. Because I'm resting in what Jesus has already promised. Somebody shout amen in this place. Call the number on the screen or go online to order today. I want to extend a special thanks to those of you out there who are committed to giving into our international efforts. Those of you who sow precious seeds into this ministry, help us with our global missions all over this world. This year, we partner with organizations all over the world to help rescue human trafficking victims, build irrigation systems, and support orphanages, schools, and homes for the elderly. Meeting the physical and spiritual needs of hurting people opens the door to share the gospel of grace with them. Thank you for helping us minister to people everywhere, and may God bless you. Log on to our website at missions.creflodollarministries.org to see all the work we do at Creflo Dollar Global Missions. Thank you for your support. There is a purpose for your life, and you are meant to do great things. Introducing Grace Life Academy, an innovative approach to learning God's Word. Grace Life Academy offers unlimited access with hundreds of hours of online teachings from Creflo Dollar. For one low monthly subscription, you'll have access to comprehensive video Bible lessons that include features such as e-courses, study guides, an online community, quizzes, and more. Text GLA to 51555 to get started right now or go online to MyGraceLifeAcademy.com. World Changers Church International and Creflo Dollar Ministries are committed to changing lives all over the world. Your generous gifts are helping us to do just that. For your added convenience, we want to invite you to join Change Express, our automatic giving service. You can give monthly and change lives by having your love gift deducted from your checking account or credit card on the same day every month. Created for convenience, Change Express makes giving easy by allowing you to pre-plan your giving, specifying the day of the month for your gift to be deducted from your designated account, and putting your seed to work, changing the lives of people around the globe. The process of giving has never been easier, so get started today. Log on to CreflodollarMinistries.org right now to sign up for this exciting service. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. 